Morning guys, today I'm doing something crazy, vlogging on the 5D Mark IV, taking wildlife photography on the EOS R. Come on now, come on, won't you come with 5.30. It's now an hour after sunrise, and I'm, as I mentioned, vlogging on the 5D Mark IV and taking pictures on the EOS R. I, it was funny, when the EOS R came out, everybody was saying things like, oh, you can only use that for landscape photography, you can't use it for portraits, you can't use it for weddings, you can't use it for wildlife, you can't use it for sports. Everybody loves to say what you can't use certain equipment for. And I think people 15, 20, 50 years ago would just be laughing at us, thinking that you can't use a camera like this, of this technology for something like wildlife photography or for anything. And uh, I think it's totally possible. Yes, there's a learning curve well, using a, a new gear, a mirrorless camera. Um, yes, there's some issues, I guess, or some limitations, but we're gonna work around it today. Um, we've been driving for an hour, I haven't really seen anything. But hopefully we see some stuff coming up pretty quick so I can put this thing to the test. Come with me, time to let it go and be free. Won't you come and breathe the open skies? Come now, come listen to the melody. Slow it down, put yourself at ease. Time to live it live. Haven't had much luck with the wildlife, but there was just an elephant that was beautiful. Had her for, yeah, a couple seconds. Get away from the Before she took off into the forest. I was struggling with the EOS R this morning um, on my first couple shots, just getting used to how the focus works, how the autofocus works, um, finding the right autofocus points and stuff like that. But I'm finding myself actually quite enjoying it. I'm finding the touch and drag to be really nice for wildlife photography because I have the bean bag up on the sill and so I can actually have two hands on the back of the camera. So with my right hand, I'm on the shutter. With my left hand, I'm actually down here on the screen, touch and dragging the shutter to wherever I want my focus point to be. And it's a really, really fun feature. The other thing I've noticed is that the frame rate actually seems way faster than I expected. I think it's slower than my 5D Mark IV, but for whatever reason, it just seems faster. Get away, don't let it go. And yeah, it's taken a bit of getting used to, but I think it's kind of growing on me. No cats, but lots of antelopes. And I'm actually, I'm gonna say another thing about the USR that I didn't expect, is that the video is fantastic for filming wildlife. Yes, it might not be a wildlife photography camera, but wildlife video camera, absolutely. It's fantastic on the wildlife. It's just really holding the focus. That dual pixel autofocus looks and feels really good. And one of the things I'm noticing that I never thought I would do is because it's a mirrorless camera, you can look through you know, the electronic viewfinder. So I can hold the camera up to my eye and film through the eyepiece and then it actually gives me something to kind of balance on so I can get nice smooth footage without needing to set it down and I'm finding that to be a real advantage while, uh, while filming. I don't want to put the 5D Mark IV on it anymore for a video, that's how much I'm loving it. Finally got some cats, in fact, a lot of them, although they're quite a ways away. There's a dam uh, way down that way, and there's five lionesses way out in the distance. I only have 100 to 400, so I can't really do too much with it. I think even 600, you couldn't really do too much with. They're just so far away, and they're all just lazying around. When the heat be rising, we so gliding, nothing's gonna change how we feel. It's so camp. I'm tired. These uh, 458 
sunrises and 4 a.m. wake ups for safari, they're, uh, yeah, tiring. So one of my favorite parts of safari is nap time. And I really want to jump in and get a nap, but um, I got some work to do. So laptop's open, I'm plugged in and do some work and then nap time. Then we're going to get back on the road and try another safari. <laughs> Back on safari, I am so tired because I didn't nap even for a split second. It was just too hot in the tent. Um, we've only got an hour and a half to find our animals today. Um, I think it's funny because this is an EOS R video about shooting. I just honestly haven't had enough subjects to shoot with to really give you guys an honest review on the EOS R from a wildlife standpoint. I do think there's definitely some limitations. One of them is the, the EVF, the electronic viewfinder. I really like it. I like that you can see the, um, the exposure straight through the viewfinder, but I find so often it just feels like jumpy. It doesn't feel like I'm looking looking out at the world, it looks like I'm looking at a screen, it looks like I'm looking at a viewfinder, and I'm finding that a little bit difficult. So there, there's definitely limitations, and maybe at the end of this video I'll talk about some more of those limitations, but um, first I think we need to find some animals <laughs> so that, uh, yeah, I can really test this thing out, because we've seen elephants, we've seen hyenas, we've seen kudu, um, we've seen some lions off in the distance, but nothing really that was going to put the camera to a proper test. Epic action happening right now. Uh, a leopard is ju was just in the bush. There was three or four vehicles kind of blocking our path to it so we couldn't get a clean view at the leopard. The leopard has a kill, a brand new kill. Uh, an Impala it looks like. The leopard's huge. There's all this brush here. There's just a ton of brush. Oh, and there's a baby. Oh, there's a baby. Why, 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 why? Oh, he's right there on the bottom. <laughs> okay, so there's a baby that's just climbed up the tree as well. There's a baby that's just climbed up the tree as well, but it's behind all this brush and I can't shoot it um, just because it's too busy. I have taken shots. I've been shooting manual focus the whole time. Just because there is so much br brush. And yes, there was a baby down at the bottom. The baby just went up the tree because we didn't expect that. The mum has a huge Impala up the tree and it's just mom, a cub, and an Impala. But unfortunately, there's about 50 other um, safari vehicles here. And as it's always the case, whenever there's like a leopard, they don't move. And, and I can't really blame them with something this cool, but it would be nice if everybody, you know, took turns with stuff like this on the main roads, but it was just cool to just see that. And hopefully, if we stick around long enough until sunset, maybe somebody will let us have a chance at it too. What a moment, what an absolute moment. We had the two adults, it turns out there's two adults and one cub. The two adults left the kill in the tree and went for a little journey somewhere and we don't know where they are. And then they left apparently the cub in the tree. The cub was just chowing down. We weren't getting any shots because all we could see was the back. And then the cub turned and faced us and started walking down the tree. And I decided at that very moment that I love mirrorless cameras for wildlife photography. And I never thought I would say that. And for this reason, when you're photographing leopards in trees or elephants in trees or anything in trees, one of the hardest things is focus. You so often miss your focus. Focus. You just miss it a lot. That's just the nature of autofocus. And if you're manually focusing, you will still miss it because your eyes are going to be wrong sometimes. But on the EOS R, there's manual focus peaking, which I've turned on and I had turned on. And it really lights everything up nice and red right where you're going to be in focus. And all my shots are sharp because they're in focus, because of the manual focus peaking, which is amazing. But I do have to say, it almost kind of ruins the moment a little bit, the manual focus peaking, because it does turn everything red. It doesn't 
it doesn't feel like you're looking at it. It looks at, it looks like you're looking at it through a telescope or something like that. So yes, you get the photos, but also I think you kind of lose that moment a little bit. And what's wildlife photography without that moment? But it was still a pretty good moment. So that ended up being phenomenal. Even if we didn't really get a crystal clear view of the, the leopards, it was phenomenal. And actually, it's funny because I started the day thinking 100% tomorrow as soon as I can and I'm done trying to attempt to shoot wildlife photography on the Canon EOS R, I'm gonna switch back to the 5D Mark IV. But that manual focus peaking was such a game changer. It was an absolute game changer, especially in the brush here that I might shoot the EOS R again tomorrow just to play with that just because you don't miss it's so hard shooting autofocus um, in through that brush even if you're like compensating with the manual focus wheel it's so hard to pinpoint it but with the manual focus peaking which is an attribute usually video shooters shoot a lot um, it just yeah I, mi I didn't miss I nailed the focus every time and that was something that was spectacular so who knows? I might shoot the EOS R again tomorrow. It's um, it's not a perfect camera. It's far from it. But I'll tell you, I never noticed a single buffer issue. I didn't have a single buffering issue today, which a lot of people were worried about. And I thought the frames per second was fast enough. Sure, you'd like 10, 12 frames per second on a, on a camera shooting wildlife photography, but I didn't notice an issue. I never thought, oh, I wish I had more frames per second or I wish it wasn't buffering right now. So I didn't have that issue today. We'll see if we have it tomorrow. Tomorrow, back to vlog style, and we'll see which camera I decide to shoot with. And I'll see you there. Peace.